this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make a basic baguette that you could easily replicate at home. And in future videos, we'll go into a more detailed and more advanced technique. But if you're new to baking bread, this is a great starting point for you and it's still going to yield a very good baguette that you can make fresh at home. Now, you're always going to want to start with your trusty digital scale that can weigh in grams and has a tear function that allows you to zero out the, the ingredients. Also, a couple of baguette molds. And you can pick these up online for around $11 or $12. And also some two-inch hotel pans. And I'll put a link to all this stuff in the show notes. Now, between the hotel pans and the baguette molds, this is what we're going to use to generate our steam in the initial phases of the baking process. And it's this steam that is so important in creating that crackly crust that is so hard to replicate in a home kitchen. You're going to start this recipe by weighing out 800 grams of all-purpose or AP flour. And you want to make sure that you're using a national brand of all purpose that has a protein content or a gluten content of around 11.5%. Now, in the U.S., there are some regional southern brands that are formulated for making biscuits, and the gluten content is lower, around 9 to 9.5%, and it's not appropriate for this recipe. Next, you want to weigh out 520 grams of warm water, around 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is going to give us a 65% hydration rate based on the baker's percentage. Next, weigh out 7 grams of active dry yeast. And the 7 grams of active dry yeast is about equivalent to one packet of yeast that you buy in your local supermarket. And this will come out to be a little bit less than 1% by the baker's percentage. Now, our final ingredient is our salt, which is going to be 16 grams or 2% by the baker's percentage and always kosher salt. I'm going to set the salt aside and I'm going to disperse my yeast into my warm water. And this isn't so much to activate it or hydrate it as it is just to make sure that it'll be evenly dispersed throughout my flour when I mix the two together. My thought is if I have the yeast evenly dispersed throughout the water, it'll permeate the flour fairly easily. So the next step is to take my water and yeast mixture and pour it into the bottom of a mixing bowl. And I always like to have the water on the bottom and then place the flour on top. It just makes the initial combining a lot easier. And then I like to use one of these nifty little hand spatulas, the little rubber bowl scrapers to combine the flour and water. And you can also just get your hands in there, get them nice and dirty and roll that flour and water together until it comes into a, a shaggy sort of mess, a, sort of a loose a ball of dough. And at this point, instead of kneading, we're actually going to set it aside for a little while, placing it in a plastic container that's been sprayed with pan release spray, and let it rest for about 15 to 30 minutes. And this is called auto lease. And the purpose of auto lease is to allow the flour and the gluten in the flour to hydrate, making it a lot easier to knead the dough and work with the dough. And when the dough is easier to knead, you have to knead it for less time. And that'll give you a better flavor because the more you need your dough, the more it'll oxidize. So after that auto lease period, what you can do is you can do what's called a stretch and fold just like this, where you pull out one third of the dough and fold it back in on itself. One third of the dough and you fold it back in on itself. And I did spray that board with a little bit of pan release spray just to make it a little bit easier to work with. And you round the dough. And if you're going to continue the stretch and fold method, you would let the dough relax for 20 minutes and come back and do another stretch and fold and continue this at 20 minute intervals for about an hour to an hour and 40 minutes. And this stretch and fold technique actually allows you to form a gluten network without kneading the dough, and it'll give you more uh, larger irregular holes. Now for the traditional actual kneading method, you're going to use the heel of your hand and press the dough outward away from you, dusting the board just lightly with flour, uh, just as little as possible so the dough doesn't stick, and continue that kneading process for a couple of minutes. After a couple of minutes, you want to add in your kosher salt. And the reason why we waited till now is because kosher salt, or just salt in general, will tighten gluten strands and make the dough more difficult to knead. At about the six minute mark, we're going to check our gluten structure by stretching a thin membrane out of a piece of dough. And you see how it's tearing on me there? That shows me that my gluten network or my gluten structure isn't fully developed yet. But at this point, I'm kind of getting sick of kneading. Uh, I want a little bit of a break. So I'm just going to spray the board with a little of uh, pan release spray, spray the top, cover the ball with plastic wrap, and then I hang out for about five minutes and you know, go relax for a second. After that five to ten minute rest, you'll notice that the dough is a lot more pliable and easy to work. And from here, you can give it a couple of stretch and folds. You can knead it for a couple more minutes, and you should be pretty close in the ballpark of having that nice gluten network. So rip off a piece of dough 
give a little stretch. And it's hard to see with the, the lighting in this camera shot. But basically, you're looking for a thin membrane that light shines through, which we now have. So I'm just going to round the dough. And at this point, now that my gluten structure uh, is nice and developed, it's time to bulk ferment. So just place it back into a plastic container that's sprayed with a little bit of a pan release spray, or you can rub it with a tiny bit of oil so it doesn't stick. And you want to bulk ferment the dough at room temperature, and the bulk fermentation is also known as primary fermentation. And you want to bulk ferment at room temperature for about two to two and a half hours or until the dough has nearly doubled in size. At that point, it's time to divide and form. And the way you're going to do this is very gently turn the dough out onto your working surface that has a little bit of pan release spray on it. And be careful not to decompress the gas out of the dough too much. And you're going to divide into four pieces. And notice how I'm cutting into rectangular shapes. And that's going to make the baguettes a little bit easier to form. And I'm scaling these uh, four pieces to about 330 grams of uh, 340 grams a piece. Now, once you have your dough divided and portioned, you want to do a pre-form. And the way you do this, you take the top third of the rectangle and you fold it into the middle, creating a seam with your fingertips right down the middle. And then you take the top two thirds and you roll them back onto the bottom third, creating a seam with your fingertips while tucking in the ends. And then you can also use your fingertips to seal that seam. Now, commonly what you'll see too is a tension pole just like this where you tuck your fingers along that seam and you drag that seam along your board, creating tension on the top of the preformed loaf. And it also helps to seal that seam. One more time from my perspective, just the top third of the dough in a rectangular shape, you're going to fold back on itself, create a seam directly down the middle, and then roll back to the top two thirds again and create a seam. Now you can use the heel of your hand to close that seam up, get a little roll, and you always want to rest seam side down. And this preform is going to allow us to do the next step, which is the benching or the bench rest. And we're going to bench rest the preform baguettes for about five to 10 minutes to allow the gluten structure to relax. During this time, you can go ahead and spray your baguette molds with a little bit of pan release spray. I'm going to get them ready so you can form your final baguette and just place them right into the mold. And then you want to take your preformed baguette, which was resting seam side down, and turn it seam side up and then gently press down along that seam with your fingertips, slightly decompressing the loaf and elongating it by stretching it out by pulling it from both ends. And then you take the top third again, you press it into the middle of the dough or the baguette, and you seal that seam with your fingertips. And then you take the top two thirds and you roll it back on that last bottom third, creating a seam with your fingertips, pressing it down as you go. And then you want to use the heel of your hand to seal that seam so you have a nice tight seam that doesn't explode on you when you bake. Now, if you want to elongate it, you just simply can roll the dough with your hands a little bit and it'll stretch out and elongate out. And then you go and find the seam that you had originally. And when you find that seam, you place that seam in your baguette mold seam side down. Now, if you want to have some pointed ends, you can just simply counter twist your baguette and that will give you pointed ends and then elongate it slightly. And again, you want to find that seam and place it in your baguette mold seam side down. Now, real quick, from my perspective, again, here's our preformed baguette seam side up. I'm going to go down the length of the baguette using my fingertips to gently decompress it. I don't want to be overly rough here, but I'm just gently decompressing it and stretching it out slightly. And then I want to use the my fingertips to fold back the top third into the middle and create that seam going directly down the middle. And then that top two thirds is going to be rolled back and seamed with the bottom one third using my fingertips initially and then using the heel of my hand to go back and create that seam. Now, when using the heel of your hand, you always want to make sure that your fingers are pointing up towards the ceiling, never flat, because that way you're going to, if you, your fingers are flat, you're going to crush the dough. So you're just going to go down that seam, seal that seam with the heel of your hand. If you need to, you can roll it to elongate it. And again, you always want to place it seam side down to proof. Now, once you've formed your baguettes, you're going to cover them in the hotel pans with your plastic wrap and allow them to proof for about an hour to an hour and a half or until they grow to about one and a half uh, times their original size. At this point, it's time to prepare for baking. And here I have a sharp baker's razor. 
and I have it just on a little popsicle stick. Now, when scoring baguettes, you want to do it at an extreme angle, a, a little bit less than 30 degrees, coming in horizontally, and that's what's going to give you the nice little leaves or ear marks when they expand in the oven. And here I'm making three uh, slice marks as I go down the length of the baguette. And then I'm going to place some ice cubes in the tray. And the ice cubes are going to help generate steam when we cover with, with uh, tin foil. So I'm going to seal the top of the uh, hotel pan very tightly with tin foil. And then pop this into a 500 degree oven and bake covered for the first 10 minutes of the baking process. Now at this point, after the 10 minutes, you're going to remove the tin foil, and you'll notice that when you remove the foil, you're going to have some steam bellowing out, and that steam is going to help your expansion, and again, that's, that's what's responsible for that nice crackly crust when baking a baguette. I'm going to drop the oven down to 425 or 400 degrees, depending upon your oven, and bake for about another 10 minutes, and I'm going to check them, rotate them top to bottom, and turn the pans 180 degrees, and then from here, bake at another anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, again, depending upon your oven. And you want to make sure that you get a really nice, dark, golden brown color because the bottom, because you're using baguette molds, the bottom of the baguette won't brown as much as the top. So you want to compensate for that by getting a nice golden brown top to really extract the full flavor of the flour. Now, from here, you want to allow your baguettes to cool for about 40 minutes before slicing. And when you slice into this, you'll notice that you have somewhat of an irregular crumb. When you uh, squeeze that crust, it's going to crackle and crunch, which is really uh, what makes uh, this technique important with using the steam. And the crumb itself is somewhat irregular, not as much as if we would have done the entire process with the stretch and fold technique, but that's a little bit more advanced. So we're going to cover a uh, stretch and fold and a little bit more advanced process for making baguettes in a follow-up video to this. But suffice to say, nothing beats a nice homemade fresh baguette straight from your oven for sandwiches and soups and just dinner in general. For more information and for this episode's show notes, head on over to stellarculinary.com slash SB2.